it's time for E3 news. E3. Everyone loves E3. Well, if you're a gaming fan. Unless you hate these sort of broadcast events. <laughs> um, so I have the full uh, schedule. It's the confirmed schedule unless things change, obviously, which sometimes they do. E3 will take place between June 12th and June 15th. So this weekend until uh, Tuesday. So I will read through everything on the list. I won't read the times, but I'll read through what's going on during the day. So Saturday, June 12th, they have the broadcast pre-show. Uh, Ubisoft has their forward pre-show and then uh, the forward event that they usually have. Um, Gearbox has an E3 showcase and Gamesbeat has uh, something there, a Gamesbeat session, it just says. Um, Sunday also has a broadcast pre-show. Then um, 24 Entertainment has a showcase for Naraka Blade Point, uh, some game I assume I have never heard of. Um, Xbox and Bethesda will have their game showcased together on Sunday, and that will take place at 10 a.m. Um, I think this is Eastern time. So uh, Pacific time, sorry, Pacific time. So that'll be about 7 for us, 7 p.m., I believe. No, 5 my bad. Um, I think it's seven I don't, I don't know the time. I, so. I think it's seven <laughs> I don't know. Um, it will be later in the evening for uh, UK people. Square Enix will have uh, their conference. Then Warner Brothers has a mini conference there for Back for Blood, which I believe is their Left for Dead style game. Um, PC Gaming will have a show on after that, and then Future Games will have a show later that day um next up is monday uh there'll be another broadcast pre-show verizon will have an event apparently uh oh my god in television in, te in television apparently will have a um short event take two interactive will have a panel mythical games will have a show there'll be an indie showcase there uh freedom games will be on there then uh, and then Capcom uh, will have a, a 30 minute show and then Razor will have a show. So basically all the good stuff is on the weekend like normal. And then Tuesday there'll be another pre-show. Nintendo will have a Nintendo Direct and we'll have a Nintendo Treehouse Live on. That will take place at 9am uh, Pacific time. So probably about 4 or 5 UK time currently. Um, Bandai Namco will have an event. Uh, going on there. Uh, Eureka Studio will also have one. GameSpot will have a Play for All showcase there. And then the last event that will happen will be the if, uh, official E3 2021 award show. And that will cap off the um, weekend of E3. Yeah, that's... If we're gonna If we're going to pick something to look forward to there, Sean, what are you looking forward to the most? Oh well, now you're gonna make me look at something because I can't remember everything you've just said. I thought I, I thought you'd possibly Christ. maybe have something that stuck out to you. I mean, if I'm gonna pick something, um, even though we don't have Xboxes, well, uh, well, newer Xboxes, I am probably looking forward to the Xbox and Bethesda game sh uh, showcase the most. I'm hoping that they're a bit generous, and if they do announce any big Bethesda games. That are already running franchises uh that they um are cross pr uh, platform i don't think they will i think playstation are too stubborn and they uh xbox will be like nah we can't be asked to work with you so i i i'm i'm hoping yeah. i'm if hoping we, uh, we get it uh, maybe ubisoft as well um... U ubisoft always have good events for some reason, I don't know why they just always have, or, or at least interesting events. And Nintendo, I'm going to say the Nintendo Direct are usually uh, pretty good at E3. I think we'll finally get some Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild news here for the sequel. So, yeah, those are we the ones. We may also get, um, they've been rumouring, or oh, there has been rumours of Pro. the Switch Pro, yeah. So that could um, come as well. It's, I'm not going to lie. The, it, the it's Switch Pro rumoured every year. Wild will come this yeah, it, I know, <laughs> but a lot of people are saying that it, or anticipating that the Switch Pro will be, um, this would the be same, the time to like, bring it same time as Breath of the Wild. Yeah, and yeah, obviously, you know, this would be a good place to do it. Um, 
I think first thing for me as well, if they uh, show anything about Hogwarts Le- Legacy, Warner Brothers could be interesting if they show anything about that. Being Harry I don't Potter think fan. they will. I don't think they have a full showcase there. I think it's just okay. the Back for Blood. Um, unless they throw it into someone else's showcase, which I can see them possibly being a part of Xbox, maybe. Um, unless No, do they have a deal with Sony? I don't think so. I think I think the new Harry Potter games on both systems. So, uh, I think so. if I had a shit ton of money, if someone wants to pay me, um, I'd be interested in the Razor one. But unfortunately, I do not have the money to pay for their <laughs> their stuff. So, I mean, to, <laughs> I mean I, not to see what sort of things they come out with, but to bring up one, I am interested to see Capcom because it's about time they announce a new um, Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> uh like I, I mean you know not not to not to say but we we just had we just had one to be fair um but they they're bringing out yearly um releases at this point or at least biannually so i wouldn't be surprised if they announced a resident evil 4 remake because that seems to have been the rumored thing um i was joking about them having to announce a resident evil but i'm not surprised if they will uh, resident evil village was very good and i'm excited to see where they go forward from here but yeah i don't I, I don't know what they'll announce but one of the co-main events of tonight battlefield 2042 was announced and confirmed and a uh, reveal trailer was released it's about five minutes long you can find it on youtube um, we'll we'll basically recap it a little bit here as well as I've got a, a lot of news coming out from the reveal. Um, there will also be a gameplay reveal that will happen on June 13th. So be on the lookout. We'll talk about it next week as well. Um, I think it was before the podcast, so I, it definitely should be on the list. So, yeah, uh, the trailer was very cinematic it showcased a lot of the areas you'll see in the game um i can get some of these areas up for you one second there is um a map that takes place in the deserts of qatar there are there is a map that takes place in south korea which is the city that is in the trailer that gets bombarded by the tornadoes that's a south korean city in the game um the space station the space center that is in the game is in french uh, guyana i think so uh, those are some of the maps that will be appearing um i will run through quickly what will be included on ps5 there will be 128 player count uh lobbies i think that's also for xbox series x and for pc as well um for the ps4 and xbox one there will only be 64 player lobbies so yeah um there'll be no campaign mode which i've seen a lot of people complain about i don't understand why they're complaining if it was call of duty when call of duty did it to black ops um I, I completely understood. Black Ops had a running storyline, it had characters that were much loved, and they kind of just threw it to the side for no reason. Battlefield 2042 is, while it's not a new IP, it has no correlation to any other Battlefield game. So it doesn't really matter. No one plays the Battlefield games for the storyline. Some people play Call of Duty for the storyline, but no one's ever really played Battlefield for the storyline. The last good Battlefield stories were the bad company ones i'd say three and four weren't terrible as far as i remember they weren't terrible i should say but um they they weren't anywhere near like 99 percent of people that play battlefield play it for the multiplayer and i kind of i kind of disagree with everyone complaining about this if it was call of duty like i said i'd understand um, there will apparently be seven massive maps at launch. Uh, we named just a few of them there uh, before. And there will also be dynamic events like we were talking about. Uh, there will be the rocket launch. There will be tornadoes. And there will also be a sandstorm that will uh, take place in the Qatar map, which uh, could be very interesting as well. 
Um, and I assume every map will have some sort of a natural disaster-esque thing. Um, so it'll be, be interesting to say the least. Um, there will also be wingsuits in the game. So um, you can, I believe it was confirmed in the trailer, but um, it was also confirmed by others that you can use your wingsuit in the uh, tornadoes, which will be very interesting. It will add another element to gameplay. Um, so yeah, we also have um, that they'll be adopting the battle pass formula from uh, every game, <laughs> but most notably Warzone and Call of Duty. Um, what night? Fortnite already started. Uh, notably, now in the genre, it's not a battle royale, mm -hmm. but um, it will feature both a free and paid. Uh, free and paid options, sorry, uh, but no weapons or vehicles will be locked behind a paywall for the battle pass, kind of like how uh, Call of Duty does it now. It'll just be um, skins and stuff. So that is all the news we've got from it. What did you think of the trailer, Sean? Um, these trailers kind of annoy me a bit because obviously, I know they to announce the game, mm -hmm. but they don't really show you much. Obviously, we saw some areas but they are very cinematic. It's not, and obviously they're always in game engine, but it never looks how the game actually does. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you never know now. Like with yeah, the technology we've got now, you know. Yeah, know. we're still waiting to see. I think obviously with a lot of games, with that, we're not really having many actual PS5 releases um, of what the graphics can actually do on these newer consoles. Um, so. It could be that it looks fairly cinematic and it's Thankfully, we only have to wait a week for the gameplay reveal. So that's yeah. well, less than a week. So we'll be back with that. But personally for me, I thought the stuff that I saw um, was very interesting. I, I like the weather. I like the, the, weather's the big weather thing. Is, that's going to be an interesting, obviously, uh, uh, addition. Because obviously not really, or well, shooter games in, in this case, there's not any that I know of that have done this previously. Unless you can think um, of any, just just cause does it, but it's very much a, so a single player franchise. Just cause is very much um, like I think I think it was four that had the natural disasters. So you had earthquakes and tornadoes and stuff. Never played it myself. wasn't a very well received game, but Battlefield has a history of um, like destruction like this, and they might have done disasters and stuff in the past but probably not to this scale at all um i don't think the technology could have handled it uh but call of duty even copied them for modern warfare 3 and called it levolutions i believe back in the day um so that right. was that was funny uh but battlefield yeah, is I th is very i think these stuff. Wet weather uh things will be interesting obviously it has the capability of completely changing a map mid-game mm -hmm. um which I think is really good for replayability sort of thing of especially if um obviously we know that Battlefield's quite known for big maps of if uh maybe when it happens it, it's a different location on the map each time so that it's not always the same place that's affected. Uh that could be quite interesting if they're able to do that. Um and you know how it will interact with the players will be interesting. Like if it's uh if you're in the middle of the this weather storm or whatever it is do you die or did it just it affects your vision? Obviously that'll be a big change of all of a sudden this big like sandstorm comes in, you can't really see anything. Uh it might be that there's extra things like you can equip goggles maybe so you can see better, but it takes up uh one of your slots for equipment. I don't know. There's a, yeah. a lot of possibilities they could do with it. Um but I think it's interesting and will definitely add a whole new dynamic to, to the game. Um, past Battlefield games have dealt with like sandstorms and dust storms. I think Battlefield 1 has it from what we played. Uh, we've had where it obscures your vision a lot uh, sometimes. Uh, but, oh well, there's definitely fog. I remember there being fog in Amiens to be specific. But, yeah, I'm very excited for this. It's about time we got a more modern, well, it's technically futuristic, but it's not going too far. <laughs> And with it, I don't. There's not like jetpacks. There's not. There's wingsuits, but wingsuits have been in games before. Like it's not a, a big deal. I kind of like wingsuits rather than just. I don't know if there'll be parachutes as well, but 
um, I do like wingsuits as a concept. So yeah, I'm very excited to see where they go with it. There's not much else to say. There wasn't much um, to talk about other than uh, the showcases of the maps, like the South Korea map looks pretty good. I don't know how much of the map will be open if you can go inside all the buildings um, in the skyscrapers and stuff. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, I, I like the rocket launch stuff. I believe we saw, like, I know we said the tornadoes were in the South Korean map, but I believe there was in one of the leaked photos a tornado at the um, space center. So maybe like some of these natural disasters will be not just set for one map, there'll be like crossovers. Which will be interesting. I don't know. I don't. I feel like they're better off sticking to a natural disaster and map, but I guess it changes up gameplay. So I'm not against it uh, personally. So yeah, that is our Battlefield 2042 talk discussion.